I don't know what you were expecting, but he's working. He's turning it around right now. I just hear him say he's working. I just hear him saying that he's working. He's turning it around right now. We thank you. It might not be how we thought it should be. It might not look like we thought it should look. But God has turned it around. Amen. 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 We thank you for coming and joining us for our service on today. You can have a seat and be seated. <laughs> Truly, we serve a good God. We, we just thank God for his goodness, his grace, and the ability to see his hand at work in this season. I won't be before you long. We're going to hear what thus said the Lord and continue on with our day. You know, we're living in a time now where everything changes rapidly and without warning. You know, there was a the time when you could tell when things were about to change because you saw things getting a little uneasy. You saw things getting a little different. You saw the buildup, and then things happen. But we're living in a time now where things change instantly, without a warning, without asking our consent, without receiving our permission, without seeing if we are prepared, without seeing if we want this to happen or not. Things are happening instantly. Good things are happening instantly, but not so good things are happening as well. Just as quick. You can't have one if you don't have the other. But today we want to learn how as things are changing constantly and quickly around us, we must remain constant. Now what does it mean to remain constant? When you remain constant, you don't lose your focus. When you remain constant, you don't change as the times change. When you remain constant, you don't change as the fads change. When you remain constant, you are so focused on your assignment and so focused on your calling that you don't even deviate as the things around you deviate and change because you are constant. How do we become constant? We stay consistent with that which we're doing in this season. We were created to give him all the glory. Your sole purpose for being here is to give God the honor, the glory, and the praise. And if we focus on that which we're called to do, we won't have time to worry about the economy. We won't have time to worry about disease and pestilence and violence because we're focused and we're constant. You see, the times we're living in have been affected and it has affected each and every one of us. It has challenged how we think. It has changed how we act. And it has likely made many of us examine where we have our trust. How many of you read labels now before you eat something? There was once was a time when nobody cared about that. I grew up where in the summer, when you were thirsty, you grabbed a spigot out in the yard that's been laying in dirt, dust, mud, whatever, and you drank until your stomach was full. I was born in 1979. Let's reverse that. Tell a child born in 2007 to drink water from a spigot outside that hasn't been filtered, that hasn't been sanitized, that we don't know where it came from, and see the response that you get. Because the world is changing. And as the world changes, you have a choice. Are you gonna remain constant, or are you gonna be contingent on that which is happening around you? We live in a world now where before you shake somebody's hand, you think twice about it and you look for sanitizer. Before you hug somebody, you think to yourself, have I heard about them being sick lately? Because once upon a time, you hug people that were dirty, you hug people that had the flu, you hug people that had pneumonia, you went into the houses of people and they said they were dying, you laid in bed next to them, you kissed your loved ones in the casket. How many times have you seen these things happening lately? Because the world is changing. But we have a decision to make. We can remain constant or we can be contingent. You see, we live in a time.
time right now where people have watched their riches evaporate. They've watched their jobs disappear. Animosity has developed between family and friends over topics in the news and changes in our society. How many know that to be true? You see, there's somebody that went to work recently as the CEO of a company, and they left that day headed for the unemployment line because things change quickly in this season that we're going through. You see, some, not too long ago, somebody invested millions of dollars in the stock market and became filthy rich. But by the end of that same day, the black in their bank account had turned red because things change quickly. Are you gonna be constant or are you gonna be contingent? You see, somewhere around the world, there's some best friends that were arguing over whether or not it's gonna be, he's gonna be called Johnny or he's gonna be called Janita because things change quickly. We grew up in a time where it was boy and girl. We live in a time where it's any and everything. Are you gonna remain constant or are you gonna be contingent? You see, if some people take these things and they look at them at face value, I'm right and you're wrong. And if you can't do it like I say do it, I'm not gonna do it like you say do it. And we miss the bigger picture. God ordained family. God ordained unity. Everything that Jesus did when he walked amongst the earth promoted family and promoted unity. He didn't separate the disciples based on who was a better fisherman. He didn't separate the disciples based on who had more stock. He didn't separate the disciples based on who came from a better family. He didn't separate the disciples based on who had good kids and who had bad kids. He didn't separate the disciples based on who came from Nazareth and who came from Capernaum. He sat them all together at the table. They didn't always agree, but they remained in one place and on one accord. And the world that we live in today wants to teach you and tell you that you can believe what you want to believe, you can do what you want to do, and anybody that doesn't support it exactly as you support it, cut them off and turn away. But it's a lonely island to be on when everything has to be your way. We have to learn to agree to disagree. We have to learn to love despite. That's not what the world is teaching you. So are you going to remain constant or are you going to be contingent? You see, somewhere out there, there's best friends that have fallen out over social media posts. They've forgotten the love they had for one another. They've forgotten the relationship they've built together. They've forgotten about the things they've been through and they've let a difference of opinion drive them apart. Because the world says be independent. The world says you can do it by yourself. The world says I got it going on and I don't need nobody else. The world says you're self-made. The world says you become a boss. The world says you can pull yourself up from the gutter to where you need to be. But that's not what the word says. The word tells us that we come together and two or three are in the midst and he's there with us. So are you going to be constant or are you going to be contention. You see, life certainties are no longer certain. And there's a struggle that we're all going through to find real answers and seek help. Mental health is real. How do we know it's real? Look at what the pandemic did to us. Before the pandemic, we were hugging and hanging out and having a good time, loving on one another, doing what needed to be done. The pandemic came about and it said, social distance, six feet apart, don't touch, don't hug, don't breathe on me, don't cough on me, don't come to my house, I'm not sharing with you. And what did it do for us? Everything around us changed. So we have a choice to make. Were we gonna be constant to that which we knew, not forsaking the gathering together of the saints? Or are we gonna be contingent on what the world said? Y'all come together, you're gonna get COVID. Some might get sick, but don't we know the healer? Will you be constant or will you be contingent?
tension. You see, in the midst of all of this, there's an outcry for equality and human rights as people's inner fears and frustrations boil over and often in violent demonstration. We live in a world now where those things that you thought you had tucked away in your heart, those secret feelings that you harbored against your neighbor, those feelings that you felt against people that don't look like you, those feelings that you felt against people that don't make money like you, those feelings that you felt against people that wronged your grandparents and great grandparents. We're in a situation now where those secret feelings are all boiling over. Will you remain constant? Or will you become content? You see, people go to school now and they're telling their children, I don't want my kids sitting next to those little boys that grew up on the wrong side of the track. We all went to school together and there was never a problem and the teachers taught and we learned. But now we live in a society that tells us if it don't look exactly like us, if it don't talk exactly like us, if it's not the same social economic status as we are, we don't have to be in the midst of it. You see, now we go and live in a time where people are saying, I don't want my children going to school with those children that have a different belief system than I have. But what world are your children gonna live in? We look around us and everybody doesn't feel the way we feel. Everybody doesn't think the way that we think. Everybody doesn't move the way that we move. But are you going to be constant or will you be contingent? We have to learn to agree to disagree. But that's not what we're doing. We don't want to agree to disagree. We want to disagree so that we can fight. We want to disagree so that we can turn up. We want to disagree so that we can make a scene. We want to disagree so we can go viral on social media. We want to disagree so that everybody knows I've been messing with me. We want to disagree so everybody knows that I'm right, even when I don't think that I'm right. Because that's the society, society that we're living in. And really, what all this boils down to is simple fear. People are scared. And people don't know what to do. Now, what's everybody scared of? Why is there such a lack of peace in the world that we live in today? Well, I'll tell you, Matthew 6 and 19 through 20 says, do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moss nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. We've got our perception all wrong. We're not looking where we need to look. We're not working the way we need to work. We're not focused where we need to be focused. The fact is, despite knowing that this is what Jesus has told us, so many people will place a tremendous amount of hope in their investments that they've acquired here on earth. We'll be sure that our car runs well before we're sure that we have a prayer life. We'll be assured that we have enough money in the bank for retirement, but not sure that our neighbor that's in need has and we have enough to share. We'll be sure that we've taken care, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with this, generations that are yet to come, but we're not taking care of the community that we live within. I remember a time when Marguerite and Willie planted their field and it wasn't just their field. They gave to everyone that was around because God blessed them with enough, more than enough, because he's a God of excess. He's going to give you enough that you can share with those around you and your house never runs empty. But we live in a world today where it's all about greed and self and status. See, I can't give you Vita and help you because then I'm not going to have enough to be thought of as having all that I need. So I'll have excess that I don't need and I'll watch you live in deficit. Is that what the God we serve is all about? No. You have a choice. Are you going to be constant to what you know or contingent to what the world is telling us. You see, so many people take their energy and their efforts to build up the treasure here on earth so that they can be comfortable and pleasant. But I've never seen your earthly riches make it with you past judgment day. That there ain't no story shed in heaven. There ain't no story shed in hell. 
So what you make here, if you don't spend it, is gone. It serves you nothing. And that which you don't spend won't have the same value tomorrow that it has today. I look at stock. I put money in it weekly. And I see a week and I'm excited. And I look another two days and I want to pull it all out. Because it changes day to day. But then I think about my Heavenly Father. And the promises that he promised were the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what we're going to do today, we're going to examine the constant that's needed in a time such as this. Let us stand for our scripture reading. We're going to come from Jeremiah today. Jeremiah 17, verses 7 through 18. And it says, but blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes, it, and its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Amen. Amen. Gracious Father, we thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity to come together, Lord, and share your word, Father. I just ask you right now, Father, to let your word bless us, Heavenly Father, like you've never been blessed before, Father. Let this word refresh us, let this word sustain us, and let this word give us the encouragement that is needed for a time such as this. Heavenly Father, speak to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. The constant needed in a time such as this. The first point that we have to remember is you must have confidence in God. We said it before and we'll say it again. You must have confidence in God. We can think of difficult times of hardship as a drought that is all over the world. Anxiety is everywhere and people are filled with unrest about their jobs, the economy, the government, and any and everything you can imagine. The world is in a drought, but we are like a tree planted by rivers of water. The world is changing, up today, down tomorrow. Have some resources, have no resources. Your money has a value, your money has no value. Take the drugs, don't take the drugs. Get the shot, don't get the shot. Do this or do that. The world is constantly changing. But we must be like the tree planted by the water. How is the tree confident in the drought? Because it's consistent and it's constant. And the tree knows where its source comes from. The tree is not concerned about the world because the tree is still the tree when it's a drought. The tree is still a tree when it's a tsunami. The tree is still a tree when it's a hurricane. The tree is still a tree when it's a fire. The tree is still a tree when you've got money. The tree is still a tree when you have the money. The tree is still a tree when you're happy. The tree is still a tree when you're sad. The tree is constant. The tree is not contingent. The tree remains constant. You don't have to worry about the economy because your father owns all the cattle on the hill. You don't have to worry about your finances because he'll open the window of heaven and pour out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. The world can tell you that your money has no value, but your faith tells you that your father did not leave you nor did he forsake you. The world will tell you, if you don't have this much money, you can't retire. But your faith will tell you that your father brought you last year and he'll take you next year. Your faith will tell you that your father kept your great-grandparents that didn't have a 401k, so he will do the same thing for you. We must remain constant. Why is the tree not worried about the trout? Because the tree is planted by the water. You see, you see the tree, you see the conditions around the tree, but the tree stays confident because the tree has roots that go down to the water. You don't see the tree begging. You don't see the tree asking. You don't see the tree fretting. Because what you can't see for the tree is working out of your plain sight. The roots are covered. They're underground. If you look at the tree, you don't know what direction it's getting its water from. You don't know if it's coming from the front, the back, the left, or the right. But it's flourishing and it's growing because the roots have reached out. And that's what we have to do. We have to be like the tree that's planted by the water because you ain't worried about the drought because you're connected to the source. 
Now, how is the tree connected to the source? Because when the roots reached for the water and the roots started to disturb the soil, it, it made a little motion. As the motion came, the water came toward the roots. If you reach for the Father, he'll reach back. Yes, he will. It's a drought going on above land, but underwater we're reaching, underground we're reaching, and as we're reaching, he's reaching back to us. Yeah. But you know what he's doing? He's teaching you to stretch out. Yeah. He's teaching you to get out of your comfort zone. He's teaching you not to let go. He's teaching you not to worry about what's happening. He's saying, if you reach for me, I'll reach back to you. Amen. You see, our investments change based upon the trends. Put your money in stocks. Put your money in bonds. Put your money in the banks. Get a CD. Don't put your money in bank. Invest here. Invest there. Get rich quick. Pyramid scheme. All these different things. But they are contingent on you doing one thing or the other. Our accounts draw interest based on how much money you have in them. You see, our children behave based upon what they want to get from their parents. But the father says, be constant. And what the father says, be constant is, don't worry about the contingent things, because I am God that change of not. Don't worry about the fads that are coming, because I am God that change of not. Don't worry about what the stock market is doing, because I took care of great grandma and great granddad. Don't worry about what your account is doing, because those that came from Africa didn't have bank accounts. Don't worry about what the elements are doing, because there's something to survive without shoes. There's something without jackets. There's something to survive without vaccine. Because I am God. And I change of not. Will you be constant? Or will you be contingent? The trees is planted by the water. My Aunt Ma loved her trees and her flowers in her garden. And one day we were talking and I developed a love for flowers myself and I bought a gardenia bush and I said, I'm going to plant it in the backyard so that our backyard can smell like gardenias, just like your backyard. And I planted the gardenia bush off in the corner because I just put it over there. And I said to my aunt, Mark, and I said, Mom, my bush ain't growing. She said, because the gardenias like water. See, I planted my garden, she planted her gardenia bush near the drain from her kitchen sink. So there was always water flowing and the tree was always flourishing and growing because the tree was connected to the source. You want to know how your life is going? You want to see if your life is flourishing? What are you connected to? Amen. Are your roots expanding? Yes. Are you reaching for the water? Are you even planted by the water? Mm -hmm. Because if you are not planted by the water, you will be affected by the drought. Mm -hmm. But when you're planted by the water, you can have a confidence and you can fold your arms and you can say, I see what's happening in the world around me. I see what's happening to my neighbors. I see what's happening in society. I see what's happening on my job. But I'm planted by the water. Amen. So my second question to you today is, what type of tree are you? Are you a pine tree? A little something, I'm, and I've been looking at a lot of trees lately. Something I've seen about pine trees. The pine trees will show up really quick. They grow really tall, and they're really high. They tower over the other trees. You always notice the pine tree. You can see the pine trees from the distance. Are you a pine tree? Are you one that, you know, gets ready to do something, and you get so ready, but you hit it gung-ho, you run fast at it, and you poke your chest out for everybody to see what you've done? You didn't practice. You didn't study. You didn't prepare. You just shot up. But what happens to the pine trees when the bad weather comes? Uh -huh. You got a few pine trees in your yard? Let it rain hard and wind blow pretty hard in one bad storm. Branches fall everywhere in your yard. Because the pine tree is tall, the pine tree is seen, but the pine tree doesn't have substance. It's just for show. And things that are done just for show, when situations and circumstances get hard, they're not going to stand. The pine trees will break in half and fall on your house because they shot up high, but they have no substance. The pine tree has some roots because it's growing, but it's not deep roots and it's not firmly planted. 
And everything about the pine tree, you can see with your eyes. There's nothing much happening underneath the surface. Don't be a pine tree. Are you a flower-bearing or fruit tree? Everybody loves a flower-bearing tree and a fruit tree. We love our dogwood trees because we know when the springtime is coming because the dogwoods are covered in white blooms. They stand out. They're not nearly as tall as the pine tree. They're not nearly as big as the pine tree, but they garner attention because of their beautiful flowers. But see, the dogwoods are only beautiful for a season. People look forward to the dogwoods in spring, but the dogwoods doing nothing in summer. When the season passes for the flowering tree, everybody forgets about them. Do not be a flowering tree. Because people will love you when they can get something from you. People will love you when the spotlight is on you. But when your season passes, people will leave. Amen. You can be a fruit bearing tree. Everybody loves a fruit bearing tree because the fruit bearing tree produces and that which it produces people come to take from the tree. But what happens to the pear tree in November and December when the frost comes and the bitter winter days come? You can't recognize the pear tree from hardly any other tree because it's lost the fruit. People loved it when they could get from it. But when there's nothing to get from the tree, people forget about it. Now are you, you could have another choice. You could be an oak tree. Now let me tell you something about the oak tree. The oak tree doesn't grow as quickly as the pine tree, and the oak tree doesn't produce flowers and fruit like the flower-bearing tree or the fruit-bearing tree, but the oak tree is constant. You see, the oak tree can be planted over here, and it's gonna get massive over the years, but it's gonna take many years for it to get there. But what you notice about the oak tree is you can always find the roots spread out all over the ground because the oak tree is firmly planted. The oak tree has reached deep into the foundation. When the storms come, pine trees are everywhere, flowering trees are everywhere, fruit bearing trees are everywhere, but the oak tree is still and the oak tree is constant because what? You can see some things happening above the surface, but the, what's really taking place is underneath the ground. It's all about the relationship between the roots and the foundation and the water. And that's what the oak tree does, and that's what you and I should do. Don't worry about being seen. Don't worry about providing for people. Don't worry about what happens after your season. Stay consistent and be right. That's when your blessing comes. The scripture tells us that the tree's leaves are always green because it's connected to the source. It's got the water. It's firmly planted at the foundation. The scripture tells us that the tree always bears fruit. So you might say, so why am I going to be an old tree? It's not bearing fruit. Not all fruit feeds your physical man. There is some fruit that is needed to feed your spirit man. The old tree feeds your spirit man. Because the oak tree reminds you to stay constant. The oak tree reminds you not to be contingent. The oak tree reminds you that the drought can come, but if your roots are spread out, you have nothing to worry about. The oak tree reminds you that you can grow where you're planted. The oak tree reminds you that you can be in the middle of the desert and the water can be five or ten miles away, but if you stretch those roots out, if you disturb the soil just enough, you're reaching for the soil, for the water, and the water is reaching back to you. The oak tree may not feed your natural man, but the representation of the oak tree will always feed your spirit man. So as we're going through the rest of our day, as we're going through this upcoming week, as we're going through the challenges that you left at home to come here today, I want you to return home and remember the oak tree. I want you to return to your situation and remember that we're going to be constant. I want you to return to your situation and remember that you're planted by the water. I want you to return to your situation and not worry about the flowering trees that are in season. I want you to return to your situation and not worry about the fruit bearing trees that are in season. But when you return to your situation, remember 
the consistent oak tree. When you return to your situation and you see the drought that's happening all around us, when you return to your situation and you see the calamity that's all around us, I want you to stand still, I want you to be okay, and I want you to have a confidence because you are the tree that's planted by the Lord.